All right. Oh. Hope I'm in focus and everything. Thank you for joining me here, Mike Hatfield again. Today is a special day. Um, it's my brother's 10th birthday today. Those of you who know me personally, sorry, there's no shade here in the sun. Uh, those of you who know me personally know that I was an only child my whole life growing up. I had no brothers or sisters. All through school and high school, I had a, I had a couple very close friends I considered to be uh, my cousins. Um, and they were, at times, it was good times and bad times, right? But that's just being a kid. But I had no brothers or sisters, no offspring. Uh, that, that was related to me there until I graduated high school and my mother came home well nine months ago and would have said you know that she was having a child uh, with her new interest there and she would go on and have my baby brother and his dad is not the same dad as mine but I consider him to be a stepdad because he's been He's been really, really great to me these past 10 years. And I consider him family. So my brother is my half-brother. We had the same mom but different father, right? Well, I came into town today to come see him for his birthday. And uh, I had some time to kill. So I drove around my old neighborhood growing up. The old stomping grounds, they say. I drove past my old house. Uh, my old friend's house, he was impossible used to hang out with, play games, ride bicycles, play tag, you know, fight and wrestle and roll around out in the yards, right, you know, kids. And it really reminded me that this isn't where I live anymore. This isn't who I am anymore. And uh, <clears throat> some verses came to me here and I tried to write them down quickly before I wrote, before I started filming this for you guys. And, uh, I don't really have a title for this. Working title, I guess, would just be new. Because the Bible says that when you get saved, when you trust the Lord Jesus Christ for your salvation, you become a new creature. And something that is new is not the old, right? Like, the New Testament is not the same as the Old Testament. Amen? There's many, many people out there, many churches out there that are confusing the two together. I might be able to take these off. I might just be squinting half the time. Take your Bible with me today. Turn here to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We'll start this. We'll see where it goes. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I believe I want verse 17. Here we go. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So it says that when you get saved and the Holy Spirit of God dwells inside of you, you become a new creature. It says old things pass away. And that's what I was thinking about today as I drove past my old house. I'm actually here at one of the churches I attended as a kid a couple times. Um, I don't know if it's the first church I ever attended, but it's the first church I remember attending. I'd go to a vacation Bible school here. My mom and I would come to a Sunday service every now and then. Not often, not frequently, but every now and then. And it is a church of Christ, so doctrinally speaking, it's not the best or the most sound. And I, I tell others to, to stay away from churches like this. But uh, it, this parking lot that I'm in, this big hill, uh, I have a lot of memories here. Uh, the, I remember the first time I was bad and stayed out past the, the curfew or whatever, past like, when the lights came on. I remember my mom came up here. Michael, we get the car right now. You know, I, I was in trouble. First time ever, like breaking the rules. 
uh, first time like holding hands with a with a girl was in this parking lot, you know. Um, so this I have a lot of memories here, and those those are all old memories, and that's what this video is about. It's about we are something new, all right. We are not something old anymore. Um, old things are passed away, amen. That means we don't do some of the things that we used to do. We don't go the places we used to go. We don't talk and socialize with the people that we used to. Um, they're in, uh, oh, I think it's in Galatians. Maybe it's here in Second Corinthians. Uh, Paul said some of you used to be, you know, adulterers, adulterers, idlers and stuff. But now you are washed and sanctified. All right. So if you if you used to do something, it means that you no longer do it. Something else that we should no longer do or try not to do is sin. Now, sin is everywhere, and unfortunately, you're going to run into it daily. And it's not possible for you to not sin. Okay, it is impossible for you to go a day without sinning. Okay, that's actually what the law was, was to show the Israelites that they needed a Savior, that they needed a Messiah to come. The points of the law were to show them that they weren't perfect and that they couldn't keep the law perfectly, right? But today, unfortunately, many people are trying to put us back under that same system, that same law, that same works. And that's not, that's not how we are saved today. Amen? Yeah, I'm on track. Turn with me here to the book of uh, Romans, chapter 6, uh, verse 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So right here, Paul is writing to the church in Rome, and he says, you're not under the law anymore. You're under grace. Amen? And grace is such a wonderful thing, because grace is all we have. Grace is what saves us. Amen? And he says here, to be dead to sin. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to have sin in your life. You're not going to encounter sin in your life. Sorry, the clouds are moving. The sun's coming on and off. But rather, put those things off, okay? Try, 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 try to not live in sin, right? There, like I was saying, he said, some of you used to do these things. That means that you don't do them anymore. And the same goes with sin. It means that we try to, to, to keep ourselves to a higher standard, to a more holy standard, a more righteous standard, because He is our righteousness, right? And if we, we need to try to avoid the sin, that doesn't mean that you're going to avoid it at all times. You're going to walk into sin. We sin every day. And a lot of people don't understand that when the Bible teaches there's sin in your mind, in your head, there's sin in your heart. There's not just sin in your body and what you do and actions, right? Things that you say can be sinful. Things that you think, things that you watch can be sinful. And we really need to try to, to be dead to those things and not do them anymore. Now, if you do fall to temptation and sin, you, you should feel bad, right? The Holy Spirit should convict you. But, don't, but you, you need to understand that it happens. It happens to me. It happens to every pastor and preacher out there, right? And you need to just get up. Thank the Holy Spirit. And just say, Lord, you know, I'm sorry. I, I, I know what I've done is wrong. Forgive me of this. And try to help me so it doesn't happen again. Or so it doesn't happen to me next time, right? You can't get away from sin. But we can try to walk more righteous and more holy. And not as sinful, right? Turns me here, the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 20. 
but ye have not so learned Christ, if so that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. And see, that's what this is about, is we don't do the old things anymore because we are not that old creature anymore. I'm not that old man anymore. I am a new man. I am a new creature. All right? There's new life that is inside of me, right? Amen. And here he says, <clears throat> put away, uh, put on the new man, all right, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. All right, so he doesn't say put on the new man of sin or put on the new man of wickedness, but rather put on the new man of righteousness and of true holiness. Uh, verse 25 says, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Uh-oh. Uh, 28 or 26. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the healers and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake hath forgiven you so paul gives this list here <coughs> right to the church of Ephesus and he he, he gives his list uh, don't be angry don't lie don't cheat don't steal and he's you know he knows that the, you're going to have these things come up in life right but rather instead of lying tell the truth instead of stealing go labor go work and earn it right put off all bitterness and anger and, and uh, you know, and that, that's what we need to do is we need to put off the sin. We need to be dead to that sin. That old man is dead, right? And uh, that, that's the point of today, of the water baptism today, is it symbolizes that, right? When you go under the water, that is your old man is dead. He's buried in there, right? And when you come out of the water, just as Christ rose out of the grave, that is the new man rising up out of there. Amen. And we need to put off these things. But when you take something, here's the important thing, though. What I see a lot is when you put off something old, we need to make sure that we're putting on something new. Okay? When we get rid of the bad, we need to make sure we replace it with good. Because many, many times I see churchgoers go and they, uh, they, they don't do these wicked things anymore. But they don't do anything good. They don't do anything positive or anything new for somebody. Giving you the book of Colossians, if I can find it real quick. Colossians chapter 3. Uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And see, that's important because. Everybody says that we are made in God's image, and that's not technically true, right? When you read the Bible in Genesis 1 and 2, it says that God created Adam in his image, in his likeness. Adam and Eve were, would have been perfect and pure and holy, right? And then sin came into the world and corrupted them, corrupted their minds, corrupted their bodies. And that is where we come from we don't come from the pure side we come from the side that is wicked that's why man's nature is always wicked and that's why it's so important and i'm stressing so much today to put on the new man put on that new adam put on that new christ 
so we may live more righteous and holy. And uh, I hope this little message was a blessing to you guys. And uh, I got some things in the works here the next couple weeks. Um, somebody from down south is going to try to come up and uh, I'm going to meet with him. And we might do a live stream together. Uh, we might just make a video together. I'm not really sure. Um, I don't want to give too many details just yet because I'm not sure if the scheduling is going to work out quite for it. Um, I'm doing some more stuff around the church uh, to help out my pastor and stuff. I'm trying to get more plugged in and labor and serve the Lord there. Uh, yesterday, we got I got to go preach at the uh, nursing home in town, and that was truly a blessing. And uh, so, yeah, stay tuned to the channel here. There's going to be some things coming. I think you guys are really going to enjoy here the next couple weeks. Uh, I'll put some more information as soon as I have it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved.